Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Along with the saber-toothed cat Smilodon, woolly rhinos, and the giant deer Megaloceros, the mighty mammoths stand out as icons among Pleistocene Ice Age fauna. Probably best known in the form of the shaggy-coated woolly mammoth of Pleistocene Holocene Eurasia and North America, the genus Mammuthus was highly successful and diverse, producing up to 10 species. Originating in southern Africa during the early Pliocene, approximately 5 million years ago, Mammuthus was a member of the family Elephantidae, the group that also contains modern African and Asian elephants. Genetic evidence suggests that mammoths were the sister genus of Elephas, the Asian elephant, with Elephantidae as a group diverging during the late Miocene, roughly 7 to 8 million years ago in Africa. Mammuthus was by far the most widespread and diverse member of Elephantidae, able to inhabit a wide array of different ecosystems, from tropical savannas to freezing tundra, often being the largest animals in their environment. The genus was so successful, in fact, that an entire Pleistocene ecosystem, the Mammoth Steppe, was named after them. Mammoths are also of key importance to early human hunter-gatherer populations including Homo erectus, Neanderthalensis, and of course, Sapiens. All of these human species either actively hunted or scavenged the Proboscideans, with Homo sapiens capturing their likeness in the form of physical artifacts and cave art, providing incredibly useful information regarding the life appearance of the animals. By the end of the Pleistocene, for reasons that are still hotly debated, mammoth populations in mainland Eurasia and North America drastically declined, becoming extinct there by approximately 10,000 years ago. Isolated, small-bodied populations were able to survive on offshore islands for significantly longer, famously persisting on Wrangel Island in Siberia until about 2000 BCE, being contemporary with the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. The reasons for the extinction of the mammoth, as with many other iconic Ice Age megafauna, remain under study with both a warming climate and the spread of modern human hunters being blamed, although it is likely that some element of both played a part. Certain proposals have been made to clone mammoths in recent years. Comparative genomics shows that the mammoth genome matches 99% of the Asian elephant genome, so some researchers aim to engineer an elephant with some mammoth genes that code for the external appearance and traits of a mammoth. The ethics of this undertaking are somewhat controversial, with the resulting animals only mimicking ancient mammoths, and would potentially live out their lives as biological attractions, calling to mind the dinosaurs of the Jurassic Park franchise. Perhaps it would be better to leave these animals in a state of extinction, and focus time and resources toward protecting their living elephantine relatives. The oldest known species of Mammuthus was M. subplanifrons, native to southern and eastern Africa during the early Pliocene. It was already a large animal, standing roughly 3.68 metres, or 12.1 feet tall at the shoulder, and weighed about 9 tonnes, with elongated curved tusks and slightly rounded shoulders. As M. subplanifrons inhabited a tropical savanna environment, this species was a browser with very sparse covering of hair, much like the modern African bush elephant. Another early species, Mammuthus africanavus, first appeared around 3 million years ago with a more northerly distribution, inhabiting what is now Chad, Libya, Tunisia, and Morocco. A smaller species, Africanavis was probably an evolutionary offshoot that died out during the early Pleistocene about 1.65 million years ago, leaving no descendants. Mammoths began to spread out of Africa starting 3 million years ago, inhabiting the warm savanna ecosystems of Eurasia. The earliest European mammoth has been named M. rumanus, a poorly known species also present in China as well. Only its molars are known, which show that it had 8 to 10 enamel ridges. A population evolved 12 to 14 ridges, splitting off from and replacing this earlier type, becoming M. meridionalis, about 2 to 1.7 million years ago. With a shoulder height of about 4 metres, or 13.1 feet, and an estimated weight of 10 tonnes, M. meridionalis is one of the largest proboscideans to have ever lived, along with other larger species of mammoth and the earlier Dinotherium. Only the enormous Paleoloxodon nomadicus was substantially more massive. Its molars had low crowns and a small number of thick enamel ridges, adapted to a woodland diet of leaves and shrubs. This indicates it lived in a relatively warm climate, which makes it probable that it lacks dense fur. 
The microscopic scratches and pits in the dental enamel on the fossils of M. meridionalis suggest that the species was a browser feeding on any foliage of high-growing plants. Asian populations of meridionalis gradually evolved into the steppe mammoth, M. trogon theriae, which first appeared in the fossil record of Hubei, China, circa 2 million years ago. One of, if not the largest species of mammoth, Trogon theriae stood up to 4.5 metres or 14.8 feet tall at the shoulder and weighed between 10 and 14 tonnes. Fossil teeth reveal a lot about this animal's diet. These had between 18 and 20 ridges on tough, flat molars. Although its later descendant, the woolly mammoth, Mammuthus primogenius, had around 26 of these ridges. These plates added strength to the teeth, allowing them to eat a range of tough vegetation. An increase in ridges when compared to its ancestor Meridionalis allowed it to adapt to the drying and increasingly open environments of Eurasia. Rare finds of almost complete specimens have revealed clues to their lifestyle. Tusks in the males were thicker and larger than those of females, suggesting that the bulls fought for dominance like elephants do today. We don't know exactly when the steppe mammoth became extinct. It is thought to have vanished in Europe somewhere between 300,000 and 120,000 years ago, towards the end of the Middle Pleistocene. From the specimens found so far, none show signs of cut marks made by hominins. Relict populations of M. trogon theriae may have persisted in Mongolia and northern China well into the last glacial period, with teeth of trogon theriae-like morphology in China being dated to approximately 33,000 years ago. In Europe, populations of the steppe mammoth became isolated in the Mediterranean, developing into miniaturised insular forms. Mammuthus lamamori was native to Sardinia between 450,000 and perhaps 40,000 years ago. Known from a variety of partial specimens, this species stood up to 1.4 metres or 4.6 feet tall at the shoulder and weighed 550 kilograms. On the island of Crete, an even smaller species, Mammuthus creticus, survived into the late Pleistocene, being the tiniest known member of the genus, standing only one metre or three feet three inches tall. These insular forms most likely died out due to the arrival of humans from the mainland. Populations of the steppe mammoth entered North America across the Bering Land Bridge circa 1.5 million years ago, evolving into the endemic and similarly massive Columbian mammoth. This species was about 4 metres or 13 feet tall at the shoulder and weighed about 10 tonnes, with large males probably reaching 14 tonnes. It was about the same size as the earlier mammoth species Meridionalis and Trogon theriae, and was larger than the modern African elephant. Like other members of its genus, the Colombian mammoth had a high single domed head and a sloping back with a high shoulder hump, which differs from the arrangement in living elephants. The tusks were greatly elongated and curved upwards towards the tips, in some cases reaching up to 14 feet long, and were utilised in foraging, fighting and display. An adult Colombian mammoth would have needed more than 180 kilograms or 400 pounds of food per day, and may have foraged for at least 20 hours at a time. The trunk could be used for pulling up large tufts of grass, picking buds and flowers, or tearing leaves and branches from trees and shrubs and the tusks were also used to dig up plants and strip bark from trees. Isotope studies of Colombian mammoths from Mexico and the United States have shown that their diets varied by location, consisting of a mix of C3 and C4 plants such as grasses, and they were not restricted to either grazing or browsing. Like modern elephants, Colombian mammoths were probably social and lived in matriarchal family groups. This is supported by fossil assemblages such as the Dent Site in Colorado and the Waco Mammoth National Monument in Texas, where groups consisting entirely of female and juvenile mammoths have been found. The latter assemblage includes 22 skeletons, with 15 individuals representing a herd of females and juveniles that died in a single event. The herd was originally proposed to have been killed by a flash flood, and the arrangement of some skeletons suggests that the females may have formed a defensive ring around the juveniles. Colombian mammoths inhabited the southern half of North America, ranging from the northern United States across Mexico and as far south as Costa Rica. This region was composed of a variety of different ecosystems, including savannas, grassland and aspen parkland, with the Colombian mammoths inhabiting a wider variety of settings than the related woolly mammoth. 
Adults would have been practically immune to predation, but calves were vulnerable to attack by dire wolves, short-faced bears, Smilodon fatalis, and in particular the saber-toothed cat Homotherium. Much like the inch of dwarf European species mentioned earlier, an isolated population of Colombian mammoths on the Californian Channel Islands developed into a small species called M. exilis. Standing roughly 6 feet tall and weighing 1,600 pounds, exilis arrived in their new homeland by swimming from the mainland. The pygmy mammoth was able to thrive in all sorts of different environments found on the islands, such as high plateaus, dunes, grasslands, and riparian and steppe tundra ecosystems. This species vanished at the Pleistocene-Holocene boundary as a result of multiple factors, including human hunting, the onset of wildfires, and rising sea levels reducing the overall size and habitable areas of the islands. The mainland Colombian mammoth disappeared at the end of the Pleistocene around 11,500 years ago most likely as a result of habitat loss caused by climate change, hunting by humans, or a combination of both. At the northern reaches of its range, Mammuthus columbi lived alongside and interbred with another mammoth species, M. primogenius, the famous woolly mammoth. This iconic animal evolved from Siberian populations of the steppe mammoth approximately 400,000 years ago, developing molars with distinctive 26 ridges. The appearance of the woolly mammoth is probably the best known of any prehistoric animal due to the many frozen specimens with preserved soft tissue and depictions by contemporary humans in their art. Fully grown males reach shoulder heights between 2.7 and 3.4 meters or 8.9 to 11.2 feet and weighed up to 6 tons. This is almost as large as extant male African elephants which commonly reach shoulder heights of 3 to 3.4 meters as well and is less than the size of the earlier mainland mammoth species. Females were smaller and more lightly built than males, weighing up to 4 tons. Woolly mammoths had very long tusks, which were more curved than those of modern elephants. These may have been used in intraspecies competition, such as fights over territory or mates. Display of the large tusks of males could have been used to attract females and to intimidate rivals. Because of their curvature, the tusks were unsuitable for stabbing but may have been used for striking, as indicated by injuries to some fossil shoulder blades. Woolly mammoths had several adaptations to the cold, most notably the dense double-layered coat of fur covering all parts of their bodies. Other adaptations to cold weather include ears that are far smaller than those of modern elephants. The small ears reduced heat loss and frostbite, and the tail was short for the same reason. Other characteristic features notably depicted in cave paintings include a large, high, single-domed head and the sloping back with a high shoulder hump. Like modern elephants, woolly mammoths were likely very social and lived in matriarchal family groups. Males were mostly solitary or probably lived in small bachelor herds. This is supported by fossil assemblages and cave paintings showing groups, implying that most of their other social behaviours were likely similar to those of modern elephants. How many mammoths lived at one location at a time is unknown, as fossil deposits are often accumulations of individuals that died over long periods of time. The numbers likely varied by season and life cycle events. The habitat of the woolly mammoth is known as the Mammoth Steppe or Steppe Tundra. This environment stretched across northern Asia, many parts of Europe, and the northern part of North America during the last ice age. It was similar to the modern grassy steppes of Russia, but the flora was more diverse, abundant, and grew faster. Grasses, sedges, shrubs, and herbaceous plants were present, and scattered trees were mainly found in southern regions. This habitat was not dominated by ice and snow, as is sometimes popularly believed, since these regions are thought to have been high pressure areas at the time. The habitat of the woolly mammoth supported other grazing herbivores, such as the woolly rhinoceros, wild horses, and bison. The many ridged teeth of the woolly mammoth were effective at grinding tough vegetation, including grasses and a variety of low-growing arctic shrubs. These animals dwelt alongside several human species for many tens of thousands of years, and were of incredible significance to these peoples. The woolly mammoth is the third most depicted animal in Ice Age art, after horses and bison, and these images were produced between 35,000 and 11,500 years ago. Today, more than 500 depictions of woolly mammoths are known, 
In media ranging from cave paintings and engravings on the walls of 46 caves in Russia, France and Spain, to engravings and sculptures termed portable art, made from ivory, antler, stone and bone. Ivory was utilised to produce a variety of objects, including spear throwers for hunting, the so-called Venus figurines and the famous Lion Man sculpture, one of the oldest known examples of figurative art produced by Homo sapiens. Woolly mammoth bones were also used as construction material for dwellings by both Neanderthals and modern humans during the last ice age. Living individuals were hunted for their meat, with several specimens showing signs of being butchered by humans, although this may have been a comparatively rare phenomenon. A Siberian specimen with a spear headed better than its shoulder blade showed that a spear had been thrown at it with great force. Despite thriving across Eurasia and North America, even interbreeding with the Colombian mammoth in North America, populations of M. primogenius began to decline starting in the late Pleistocene. Paleontologists are divided over whether hunting or climate change, which led to a shrinkage of its habitat, was the main factor that contributed to the extinction of the mammoth, or whether it was due to a combination of the two factors. Whatever the cause, large mammals are generally more vulnerable than smaller ones due to their smaller population size and lower reproduction rates. Different woolly mammoth populations did not die out simultaneously across their range, but gradually became extinct over time. Most populations disappeared between 14,000 and 10,000 years ago. A recent study carried out in 2021 indicated that mammoths survived in mainland Siberia on the Tamir Peninsula until roughly 4,000 years ago. A small population of woolly mammoths survived on St. Paul Island, Alaska, well into the Holocene, with the most recently published date of extinction being circa 5,600 years BCE. The youngest known individuals persisted on Wrangell Island, Siberia, until circa 4,000 years ago, although these were noticeably smaller than their earlier mainland relatives and possessed an array of genetic defects due to the effects of a population bottleneck. These animals were clearly highly adaptable, as they were able to survive well into the Holocene alongside modern humans in some areas, being contemporaries of the fourth dynasty of ancient Egypt. Despite plans that involve cloning mammoths for reintroduction into Siberia, perhaps it is best to leave these animals alone in death, and focus on protecting living animals that are facing extinction themselves. Thanks for watching everyone! The next episode will cover another iconic Pleistocene group, the giant ground sloths of the Americas. See you again soon! Cheerio!